Preparing for the FRC PETH Part 1 Examination in Medical Microbiology and Virology An IMG's Perspective by Dr. Chidion Wukwe I decided to sit for the FRC PETH Part 1 in MMV sometime in 2018. I didn't have a time frame to work with as it was basically a loose decision made in a rare moment of inspiration. The first window of opportunity came in November or December 2018, in the shape of a program, developed by the Royal College of Pathologists. This program, known as the International Trainee Support Scheme, is an online program that supports IMGs attempting the FRC PETH exams, by matching them with the enthusiastic UK-trained specialists, who serve as educational supervisors or mentors. I enrolled for the ITSS and got matched with a very knowledgeable and motivated supervisor, who laid the groundwork for my eventual success. I strongly recommend this scheme. My preparations kicked off in earnest by August 2019, with the spring 2020 exams in mind. Meaning I had just under eight months to prepare. First, I performed an honest self-appraisal to gauge the level of my microbiology knowledge, after which I concluded that I needed to reacquaint myself with the basics. For this task, I chose a textbook on basic microbiology. In my case, this was Javits Medical Microbiology Textbook, with occasional envious glances at Murray Medical Microbiology Textbook, which I think is a very well-written book. Over a period of three months, while putting in two to three hours a day, I covered all the sections in the textbook except for parasitology which I understood was usually underrepresented in the main examination. At this point, I was fairly confident that I could answer basic microbiology questions. This was a critical step, in my opinion. The next step was studying the Oxford Handbook of Infectious Diseases and Microbiology. This pocket book is widely considered essential by the Fruitpath Microbiology and the ID community, and for a good reason. It compresses an incredible amount of information into its deceptively small frame and incorporates the UK guidelines and recommendations into its discussions on the treatment and management of diseases. While this pocket book was really helpful, especially in antibiotics and infection prevention and control, I didn't get to finish it as I skipped a number of chapters on clinical syndromes. Thankfully, I was not punished. I spent the final three months before the spring 2020 date, that is, March 23rd, reading various guidelines. The sheer amount of guidelines to be read was simply ridiculous, and I quickly realized that three months weren't going to be enough. The guidelines included the Green Book Guidelines on Vaccines, BASH Guidelines on Sexually Transmitted Infection, BIVA Guidelines on HIV, NICE Prescribing Guidelines, NICE Infection Guidelines, and other Virology Guidelines. The UK SMI were a good source of knowledge aimed at the identification of organisms, and the PHEA to Z of infectious diseases was a behemoth, and I almost got lost in there. It had links to lead to links that lead to links, a labyrinth of ID information. I probed and prodded, but I never immersed myself fully. The Health and Safety Executive site contains most of the biosafety knowledge relevant to the exam, and I also used basic search tools to look up laboratory symbols and their meanings. UCAST has excellent resources on antimicrobial resistance and susceptibility testing. As for mycology, the British Association of Dermatologists had guidelines on tinea capitis and onychomycosis. Beyond that, I had to rely mostly on IDS and mycology guidelines. Some RCOG guidelines were also relevant such as the GBS guidelines. The spring 2020 exams were deferred until autumn, and this gave me an extra six months to salvage the lamb being led to the slaughter situation in which I found myself. I consolidated the basics, read the guidelines over and over again to the point of tedium, added some extra study materials, such as, the underrated, microbiology nuts and bolts. The Learn Infection Platform, 
a virtual study platform targeted at the FRC PETH exams. The Excellent Question and Answer Book by Luke Moore Infectious Diseases, Microbiology, and Virology A question and answer approach for specialist medical trainees, was perfect for revision. Autumn 2020 finally arrived, and with it, the novel online examination experience. It felt somewhat bizarre to be sitting for an exam of such magnitude from the comfort of my home. The online format makes the examination a lot more accessible for international medical graduates. It eliminates the inconveniences of a visa application and the considerable costs associated with travel and accommodation. Moreover, the online platform is intuitive and user-friendly. Unbelievably, Part 2 examinations have also been moved to the same online platform. There has never been a better time to attempt these beautiful exams. Also, a bit of networking never hurt anyone. This website, microregistrar.com, was one of the first ever resources which I came across. In fact, I actually sent an email to Dr. Joanna Lum some years ago, and she graciously replied and offered some useful advice, so I consider it a high honor to write this article for this site. The Microregistrar Facebook group is thriving, so too it's the WhatsApp group. Potential candidates would do well to join these groups and glean useful information and study materials. As a footnote, I sat for part 1 in medical microbiology and virology. This exam is accessible to international medical graduates and clinical scientists. The part in infection is sat for by UK MM or MV or ID trainees. However, international medical graduates can also attempt this if they choose to. Do a bit of research and choose wisely. Good luck to you all. You may find the write-up and links mentioned in this presentation on microregistrar.com.